Good morning. Oh, that's Libby. Welcome to worship. It's lovely to see you all here this morning in what's not the most pleasant or inviting of days. We're having a nativity service with a wee bit of a difference, so we're modelling our service on a nativity escape room. But we're not trapped and we're not really escaping, but we're going to be solving mysteries as we go through the service, so I will explain as we go on. Well, we begin our worship by sharing the peace of Christ with each other. Peace be with you. just a few notices this morning which is that we are having our Christingle service here at half past six this evening that's a family service but it's for children and children of all ages and we'll be making our Christingles and the watch night service this year is in Dunlop Kirk and it begins at quarter past eleven with some carol singing and the service itself will begin at half past eleven And then tomorrow morning, Christmas Day, we will be here at 10 o'clock for a short informal service which will last about half an hour, I would think. And you're all welcome to all of those services. We are a people who seek to be brought together by the love of Christ. We know and are grateful that God offers us such an abundance of love and forgiveness. Acknowledging God's free gift of grace, we light the candle of love. We join now in singing together our Advent candle hymn, 
Christmas is coming with four verses this Sunday. Come before the Lord in prayer, let us pray. God of stable stars and surprises, of light and hope and new life, open our eyes and hearts to your presence in our world. Forgive our obsession with property and possessions. Forgive our compromises and narrowness of vision. Open us to your grace, that we might hear again the song of the angels and respond with a song in our hearts and in our lives. Hear us now as we respond to your love in the words of prayer Jesus gave us, saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We join now again singing hymn number 316, Love came down at Christmas.
Your mission is to shed light on the mysteries. This Sunday, you're going to be working together in wee teams, and you're going to be talking to each other during our service, and you're going to be solving four mysteries. And I'm going to come round in a wee minute and give you these mysteries to solve. And I ask you not to leap ahead. They're all numbered, so go through them one at a time and we'll be singing in between the mysteries. But you're asked to work in teams, so there's information to read. I'll give a wee summary of it as you're reading through it for the benefit of the people who are watching the recording. And then there's something to decode, and there's a code on the back of each mystery sheet. It may or may not make more sense once you actually see the bits of paper that I'm going to bring round. And you'll have five minutes, about five minutes, to solve each mystery. If it's any consolation, or I don't know, maybe not, this is designed to be suitable for ages eight and up. <laughs> so it shouldn't be too difficult. The code's probably the hardest bit. And if you have a pen, that would be handy. I, I forgot until about five minutes before we started that you might need pens or pencils, so bring them round with me as well. But you might need to move about as bit and get closer to each other, probably one team in each of the sides in the choir, and Sadie can be a team as well. I'll read out a wee part of it. Just ignore me. This is for the people who are watching the recording. We're solving the mystery of how the Old Testament prophets knew Jesus was coming. I don't think this will work for the recording. You'll just have to watch the people solving it.
Is five minutes enough? Does anybody have a red Skoda? Apparently there's a red Skoda across the road with its lights left on. Nope, nobody in here. I'll give you another couple of minutes and then you can go back to this one as we're moving on, if you need more time. I think the choir might be first. Oh, you finished? Okay, so at least I have, so some groups have finished, so put the sheets down just now. You can go back to this mystery if you finish the next ones faster. So now we're going to sing again, we're going to join and we're going to sing together in 314 Child in the Manger. We're on a learning curve here. Do you think it might be easier if I read out the wordy part of the mystery and you listen carefully and then answer the question and solve the, the decoding bit? So I'll read out mystery two. Mystery two is who visited Mary and why? So you're invited to take yourself back to Nazareth, our working class town in Galilee. Nazareth is dusty, dingy, and full of people working really hard for little money. The government recently increased people's taxes, so no one is smiling. 
There's an older teenage girl named Mary in Galilee. Mary is engaged. Her fiancé's name is Joseph. An angel comes to her. He says, Greetings, Mary. You are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary is really scared. The angel tells her not to be. The angel said that Mary would conceive a son and call his name Jesus. The angel said Jesus will be great and would be called Son of the Most High. His kingdom would never end. Mary asks a question. How can this be since I am a virgin? The angel tells her that the biological father will be the Holy Spirit. Mary simply tells the angel that she is the Lord's servant and may his word be fulfilled. Then the angel leaves her. <coughs> Joseph finds out Mary is pregnant. He thinks she did something wrong. He wants to divorce her privately. Joseph sees an angel in a dream who explains that the Holy Spirit is Jesus' father. So Joseph marries Mary anyway. The same angel that appeared to Mary also speaks to the prophet Daniel in the Old Testament to explain some mysteries. He also speaks to John the Baptist's father at his conception. Who is this important angel? And then the question is, what did the angel say? So five minutes for the question, what did the angel say? and the Bible verse focus, which is to be decoded. And again, the code is a different code, and it's on the back of Mystery 2. It's Morse code. So if you know Morse code, you can get it like that.
time is up for mystery two and we're going to sing again now we're going to sing hymn 301 hark the herald angels sing <laughs> Our third mystery, where will a prince be born? Jesus is the son of God. He could have been born in a palace to a royal family. Instead, he was born in Bethlehem, another working class town. It was full of people due to a census that required everyone to return to their tribal headquarters. Donkeys bray, horses neigh, Mary has been pushed about in the crowds as she feels that it is time for her child to be born. <gasps> now what? The inn is completely filled. The innkeeper says the young couple can stay in the barn if they're really desperate, and they are. Mary gives birth to her baby. She has no baby clothes, so she wraps him in rags. She lays him in a farm animal feeding trough called a manger, because she has no crib or cradle. Out in the fields, shepherds are watching their sheep at night. Being a shepherd is considered a, a dusty and dirty job. Nobody wants it. Shepherds have to sleep outdoors with their families. An angel appears to the shepherds. They've never seen anything like it. They are petrified. But the angel tells them not to be afraid. He says he comes with good news that will cause great joy for all the people. 
He says that today in the town of David, a saviour has been born to them. He says they will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. A huge choir of angels appears. They praise God and sing about his goodness. The shepherds decide to go to Bethlehem and see what this is all about. There they find Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus, just like the angel predicted. And now you have a question. Some choices there and you have to decide which is true. And another code to crack. And again, the code is on the back of the sheet. Five minutes.
time's up. We're going to sing together. Those who are on coffee duty say there's going to be double shots in the coffee after the service to help you recover from this. We're singing together hymn number 312, Away in a Manger. Our fourth mystery is how did the wise men know where to go? The Magi were considered special astronomers in the day of Jesus. They felt that the night sky displayed God's artwork and that the stars also acted like a language. If you could read that language, you could read an outline of God's plans for humankind. They saw a very important star. We follow them across the cold desert and see where it leads. The Magi start out heading away from their hometown, which was likely where Iraq, Iran or Saudi Arabia are today. Many people traditionally think that there were three Magi, but there may have been twelve. Nobody knows. Tradition also describes them as riding camels. However, historical Magi rode beautiful horses like stallions. It's another detail we don't know. They follow the star across the cold and barren desert. Their journey may take up to three weeks, but they feel it is important. As the Magi follow the star, they pass through Jerusalem. They go to King Herod's palace. They're important enough to be welcomed. They tell King Herod the stars show them that the Messiah had been born and they wanted to know how to find him so they can worship him. Herod's counsellors check the Old Testament prophecy in Micah 5 too, and say that the Messiah will be born in Bethlehem. He tells the Magi to report back if they find the Messiah so that he can worship the baby also. The Magi proceed on. The star is still there, still leading. They follow the star all the way to Bethlehem, where they find the baby Jesus. The Magi worship him and give him gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. Warned in a dream 
the Magi return home a different way because Herod is trying to play a trick on them. Herod actually wants to kill the baby so he won't grow up and take away his power. Herod is so mad when he finds out the Magi deceived him, he kills all baby boys in Bethlehem under the age of two. So you have a question to answer and you have another code to crack and again the code is on the back of the sheet. Five minutes.
Time's up. That was the hardest code. I couldn't actually work that code out myself. We're going to sing, and then I'll give you the answers. So we're going to sing, We Three Kings of Orient Are. solving the mysteries, attempting to solve mysteries and decoding. I'll give you the answers now. So the answer to mystery one, the question, the answer was Egypt. And the Bible verse was, the decoding, was if God wants someone to be a prophet, he will come in a vision or speak in a dream. Do people get it? Some people are smiling and nodding. Thumbs up. Mystery two, the answer is D, all three. Now, it was what did the angel say? And the message that you were to decode was the angel Gabriel. And mystery three, which is true, the answer again was D, there was no room at the inn. And the question to decode, the answer to that was God wanted Jesus to have a humble birth so that we would know that it is important to be humble like him. And mystery four, how many magi were there? D, again D, nobody knows. And the verse you decoded was, God is the creator of every star. He brings out the starry hosts one by one and calls forth each one by name. How did you all get on? Some thumbs up, some were baffled. You all get a sweetie as you're leaving, as your prize. We're escaping. This took longer than I thought it might. We're going to have our offering now for the work of the church.
Let us pray. All that we are, all that we do, all that we'll ever have, we offer now to you. Take and sanctify these gifts for your honour, Lord, knowing that we love and serve you is enough reward. Loving God, help us to remember the birth of Jesus, that we may share in the song of the angels, the gladness of the shepherds and worship of the wise men. Close the door of hate and open the door of love all over the world. Let kindness come with every gift and good desires with every greeting. Deliver us from evil by the blessing which Christ brings and teach us to be happy with clear hearts. May the Christmas morning make us happy to be your children and Christmas evening bring us to our beds with grateful thoughts, forgiving and forgiven. For Jesus' sake. Amen. And we close now singing together hymn 315, Once in Royal David's City. this place in peace and may the blessing of God Almighty Father Son and Holy Spirit be with you and those you love today and every day Amen.